Hello and welcome back to Mr. Stewart's lessons. Today what I'm going to teach you is a quick and easy way to end a game using a new class and something called a static method which I'll explain. Uh, one of the challenges in Greenfoot that people often have is what's a good way to just make the game end when you've either won or lost. For example, I have a little game here uh, with uh, bathroom tile and little roaches that run around and reproduce um, and I've got a shoe that can stomp on them so the way the game works is I go around and I try and stomp out the roaches right if I win uh, then I'm done and I want all the then all the roaches are gone um, the other thing that can happen is the roaches if I don't do anything the roaches can just get out of control and at that point when you get this many roaches there's no way I'm gonna win they're just gonna keep reproducing what I'd like to do is I'd like for the game to uh, count the number of roaches. If the no roaches are gone, we basically want to say you got all the roaches, you won. If uh, we have uh, if we have this many roaches, if we get more than like a hundred roaches or so, uh, there's absolutely no way you're going to be able to get them all. Um, and so we want to say you lost. Uh, you can download the demo of this game either at MrStewartsLessons.com or I'll put them in the comments of the YouTube clip so you can uh, uh, start from this, the, uh, from the game that I have right now. So um, uh, if you want to pause and download the demo right now, go ahead and do that. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want, uh, first of all, uh, the easy thing is we want to do is to count the number of roach actors, right? So here's the roach actors. Um, the roaches basically have a 1% chance of reproducing. If you want to see how I did that, uh, you can look in the code of the demo and you can see. But it doesn't really matter for us. What we'd like is for the world to uh, count the number of roaches. So we, um, I'm going to look in the world class. I'm going to go in the world class here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add an act method to the world class. All right. Right, just uh, as you can have, have, as you already have an act method in your actor, you can also have an act method in the world class. It runs every and does something every turn. So what we want to do is we want to uh, count the number of roaches. So first, I'm just going to make an integer variable called number of roaches equals, and uh, the method I'm going to do control space here. The method I'm looking for is uh, the get objects method uh, and that this just gets all the objects of whatever class I put in here so I'm gonna put in roach dot class uh, because that's uh, that's the name of the class that I'm looking at roach right here so I'm gonna put in roach dot class um, and that's gonna right th so this is gonna get all the roaches what we want to see is how many there actually are well when it gets all those objects it puts it into something called an array and uh, that that array uh, is is going to uh, is is going to contain all of the um, roaches, but we don't really need all the roaches. We just need to know how many they are. So if I hit a period after here and hit Control Space, um, I get all of the things that are, actually it's a list, not an array. Sorry, I get all of the things that a list has in it, and one of the things that the list has in it in this case is uh, size. And so if I scroll down here, I'll see one of them is size, and then I'll. So uh, all this is going to do is this going to going to create an uh, integer variable that's going to count the number of roaches. Okay. So there's really two way two things that can happen. If you get more than a hundred roaches, you're going to lose, right? So I'm going to say if number of roaches is greater than a hundred, then you lost. So I'm going to put in here. We'll figure out what this is later, right? We're going to put in here some code that says you lost and ends the game, okay? And that would be if, if th that means the road just got out of control, right? Now, uh, else if, so I'm going to do an else if statement, number of roaches equals equals zero. Remember, we're doing a conditional here, um, so you have to do a double equals. So if number of roaches equals equals zero, then we're going to put in some code that says you won and ends the game. 
okay um, so we haven't really put in the code right all this is gonna do right so um, uh, so uh, th this is just gonna either uh, th this is the the main thing here this is just gonna if we get over a hundred roaches it's gonna say you lost and it's gonna end the game if you got uh, down to zero it's gonna say you won and you end the game okay so the first thing we can do here is just put in the code that actually print that you lost or you won. Um, and if I do control space here, I'm going to scroll up so you can see what I'm doing. See it. Um, uh, one of the, um, one of the choices is show text. Now you actually, if you run this, you may not see show text and uh, that's because show text is actually something they've added to the newer version of Greenfoot. Um, so if you don't see show text, uh, you have two choices. The easy choice is just to uh, up, update Greenfoot, which you probably should do anyway because um, it's a little bit gotten a little bit better and they've added some new things. You could always go also go to Mr. Stewart's lessons and add in uh, uh, get my static text class, my free static text class at Mr. Stewart's lessons. Uh, if you go to Mr. Stewart's lessons and click on useful classes, um, you could do it this way. But this is the easiest way. This is show text. Uh, all show text does is it just uh, uh, says something on the in the middle of the screen, right? So I'm going to say, you've been overrun by roaches. It can be whatever at the end of the game, okay? We want to put it in the middle of the screen, so I'm going to, the easy way to do the middle of the screen is I get width, that's going to get the width of the world, and I'm going to divide it by two. Uh, and now, uh, I could have just put in probably, the, the, the world is 600 by 400, so I could have just put 300 here, but it's always better to get the width of the world actually and do it that way, because what if I decide to change the middle, change the size of the world later? And then the Y is going to be get height divided by two so um, that's gonna so that's just gonna show that text right and uh, if, if I and then um, I'll put here right uh, it's gonna be exactly the same thing this is the number of uh, roaches is zero so this means I've gotten rid of them all so I'll say you've eliminated the infestation means we've gotten rid of all the roaches okay and let me just show you what that's gonna look like um, so let's try and win here okay maybe I won't okay uh, it's actually sort of set to it can go either way oh I'm gonna lose it looks like I'm gonna lose so I'll just let myself lose um, this is what all right and now so now it says you've been overrun by roaches but as roaches do they keep reproducing and reproducing and things just get out of control when I've lost the game, I want to stop the roaches reproducing, which is uh, almost impossible to do in real life, but much easier to do in code, as I'm going to show you in just a minute. Um, and, uh, and it's basically, if I get rid of the roaches, um, it's the same thing's going to happen, and it's just going to say, uh, you've eliminated the infestation in here. Um, so, that, so now, what we need is a good way to end the game, okay? And so uh, what we're what we're gonna do, right, is uh, we, we need a way to what we need what we really need to do. So the actors have an act method, right? And uh, whatever uh, is as you know in Greenfoot, whatever is inside the act method is what makes the actor is is what happens every turn on the actor. It doesn't really matter what right now what is inside of it, right? Here's all the code that makes the the, uh, the roaches run around and reproduce and do all the gross things that roaches do. So if I could just put an if statement here, and it's going to say if if the game is not over, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an if statement that's going to go around the whole act method, right? Because if the game is over, we want the actor, whatever it is, to stop doing whatever it's doing. So we're going to want to put an if statement here that's going to see if the game is not over 
and if it's not, it's going to keep doing these things, and if the game is, is over, it will stop doing these things. The question is, uh, how are we going to keep track of this, right? Uh, the, the first option that people, that I thought of, and that other people would probably think of, is I could put a uh, variable up here, right, that says something like, boolean game, don't do this, this is, I'm going to say something I'm not going to do, game over equals equals false, right? And we could actually have the actors ask the world each turn if the game is over. That could work, that would work fine, but there's a reason I don't want to do it, because what if I want to make a level two, right? And then you want to get rid of centipedes or something like that. That is, what if I have more than one world? Uh, it's actually kind of hard, because then if the, the shoe is asking the tile world if the game is over, but then I get a different world, then uh, all of a sudden um, it's not going to work. So I'm going to do something up here. Um, I'm going to create a new class, and uh, I just can see right now that you can't see the top of the screen, so I'm going to do something. So up at the top of the screen, there's the controls. I hope this shows in my video. If I click on uh, the edit, edit, up in where it says green foot scenario, and then edit, I'm going to click on edit, and I'm going to click on new class. So as you know, a class is uh, the world is a class, the actor is a class. But we can have classes in a green foot game that are not either an actor or the world because Java is a program. It's an object-oriented language. We're writing in Java, really, and it's an object-oriented language that's built out of classes. And you can make a class that is or does absolutely anything. That's what's so wonderful about an object-oriented language. So I'm going to call this class Game Over. And uh, you see it's down here in this section called Other Classes. That means it's a class, it's a Java class, but it's neither an actor or a world. It doesn't even have to be expect to be part of Greenfoot at all. It's just a class that's all by itself um, uh, that, that happens to be in the same program. So what we're going to do is we're going to open its code window. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that it gives you automatically when you create a new class, um, uh, like create shows creates a local variable, uh, an instance variable, which we don't need. We are going to have a variable, but we're not going to use that one. We have uh, the uh, game over uh, constructor. Constructor just is what happens when you create the object, but we don't actually need a constructor for this particular class. Uh, and then. We have a um, to do, a but we sample also don't need that. method. We, don't need we also anything. don't need that. So what we're going to do, um, we start. So we're starting from nothing, and we're just going to start uh, putting um, to create some stuff that variable in there. that I didn't create in my world. So I'm going to call this public static, and don't ask me what that means yet. I'm going to tell you in one sec. Boolean game over equals false. Sorry, I didn't mean public. This is going to be private static boolean game over equals false. So private just means that only this particular class is going to be able to see it. Boolean, as you probably know here, boolean means it's a variable that is either true or false. That's all it can be. That's the name of the variable, right? Obviously, at the start of the game, we want doesn't don't want the game to be over yet, so it's going to start out false. So what does this mean? What does static mean? Uh, static is a really interesting concept in Java, and it's it, it means something that uh, so normally when I create a variable, right? As you as you know, when we have a class, right, like an actor, right, we can make a whole bunch of them. We can make as many like the roach, right? For example, right. Uh, for example, the roach is a class, right, and I can make as many roaches as I want. Um, so. Uh, each of these roaches is a separate instance of the roach class, right? And the roaches each have their own variables, as you know, right? The roaches have like world width and world height, for example, right? Well, as it, in this case, each separate individual roach has a separate world width and world height variable, right? Uh, but a static variable is different. A static variable applies to the entire class, um, that is. That there is going only going to be one game over variable for this entire game, and when it runs, there will only be one very game over variable, which is in fact exactly what we want. We don't want a bunch of different uh, game over classes, I mean, game over objects, with where some of the game is over and some of the game isn't.
Okay. So, what now? We, we're going to need to know, right? So we're going to need to do various things, right? We're going to need to, first of all, we're going to need to know if the game is over. Because basically, this class, its only job is to keep track of whether the game is over or not, right? So people are going to ask it, the world or other actors are going to ask the game, is the game over, right? So, when I'm, and, and so what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create public, a public method, public static, um, and it's going to return a boolean variable is game over and uh, all it's going to do I'm going to do open close curly brackets and it's going to return game over so public means any of the actors can call it static just like this the static variable there's a, the static variable applies to the entire class not just to the individual actor same thing here a static method applies to the entire class and that means we're going to call it differently as you're going to see in a little bit okay uh, boolean once again it's going to this is the return statement it's going to return a true or false statement and this is the name of the method all it does is it returns the status of this particular variable which is true or false right now we also need a way to tell to to end the game right that is when the game's over we need to tell game over okay time to stop the game right so i'm going to call create another uh, method public static uh, this isn't going to return anything, so it's going to be void uh, return uh, end game, okay? And um, this is just going to set game over to true. So this is really a very simple class we're making here. It doesn't do much, but it's very going to be very useful to us. We need one more thing to do, which is we might want to start the game. Um, this is especially... Uh, this is going to become important uh, if you hit the reset button because the uh, because this is not really necessarily part of the uh, this isn't isn't an actor or anything it's not necessarily going to reset itself so I want to be able to tell it to start the game so I'm just going to make one more method public static void start game and when we start the game obviously we don't want the game to be over so I'm going to make this game over equals false. So really, this is our whole method. Very sim super simple method here, but very, very handy, okay? Um, and, and the key to this is this static. This is very important. This has to be in all of your, in your variable, in all three of your methods, or it was not what I'm going to do next is. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go, and I'm going to want to each of my actors to ask the, to, I'm going to put in an if statement. I'm going to ask if the game is over and if it is then I'm gonna continue right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if um, I'm gonna put in an if statement I'm gonna say if game over dot is game over equals equals false I could have done this with an exclamation point as a shortcut but I'm trying to make this more explicit and obvious since this is a lesson then I'm going to do an open curly bracket here, and then because this is an if statement, I need to end this down at my the, my the last of my at the end of my act method. So at the end of my act method, I'm going to put a close curly bracket. So I'm going to say if game over dot is game over equals equals false. So this is a uh, and uh, I might want to do auto layout to make sure everything comes out neat and tidy, right? So let me explain this conditional that I've just created, right? Uh, so um, and you, if you have done any object-oriented programming or done some, uh, uh, use my, any of my uh, useful classes, for example, um, or done any other object-oriented programming, you may be expecting, thinking, oh, I need to create a new game over object in here. Somewhere up here, I need to say game over, game over equals new game over, so th that I can call the game over's method. But this is the beauty of a static class, because because I made all these methods static, uh, the, the, both the variable and the methods, all static, instead of having to create a new game over object, I can just use the name of the class, which is game over, and then 
ask if it and then call the is game over method which is going to find out if the game is over if the game is not over then it's going to do everything that's inside the act method that's why my cl open curly bracket goes at the start and my close curly bracket goes at the end right which is connects you can see that it connects to the open and close curly bracket so it's going to um this is this is the open this is the close curly bracket of that okay so and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing in my roach. I want my roach to uh, if see ask each turn if the game is over. So I'm going to put this in here, and then at the end of my act method again, I'm going to put a close curly bracket. Okay, and I'll do edit auto layout. So this is again going to ask if the game is over right now actually we're very close to being done because really all we need to do now is have the world uh, end the game when the game is over that's all we have to do and that, that's really right so but basically what's happening is both the roach and the shoe are going to ask the game over class not an object but the class itself is the game over or not and the game over is going to return that method I mean return that variable and tell them if it's true or false so now all we have to do is go into the world. We have our places where we know the game is supposed to end here. So I'm going to say, and the, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do game over dot end game. And that's going to end the game. And once again, because it's end game is a static method, we made it static, I can call it just directly from the name of the class. No need to create a game over game over equals new game over anywhere in here. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'll do game over dot end game. And we'll compile that. And now let's watch what watch the difference, right? I'll just let the roaches get out of control. I'm sitting here watching beer. The roaches are going crazy. And you've been overrun by roaches, but the roaches are no longer doing anything. And, uh, um, and if I uh, compile it and run it again, I'll see if I can actually win the game so you can see what happens when that works. For some reason, I'm having a hard time winning this game. Uh, but uh, it, it, you can try it yourself. And if you win the, the game, um, the, you'll, you'll eliminate all the roaches. And uh, it, it'll say you, you eliminated the infestation and you'll win. So um, there is one other problem here, which you'll see. Um, that I minor thing that has to be fixed. If I just press the reset button now and I press run, the roaches still won't uh, will, will still think the game is over, and so will the shoe. The shoe won't do anything. Um, that's because the game over class, uh, uh, unlike the 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 actors in the world, are both like sort of know that they're part of a green foot game, and so uh, they they they're sort of programmed. Uh, to, to start over whenever uh, the game starts again. But the game over class is really, if for all it cares, it doesn't know it's part of a green foot game. It's just like, hey, I'm just a Java class. I'm just sitting here doing whatever Java classes do. You never told me that the game uh, started again, so as far as I'm concerned, the game is over. So we need to explicitly tell game over that the, to start the game again, which is a very simple thing to do. We can do this in the uh, constructor class of the world. I'm just going to say game over dot start game and this will just uh, make sure that this is going this this uh, public tile is going to run again every time that uh, the world uh, we reset the world and this will actually make it tell the game over to start the game again that is it's going to set uh, the start game if you remember start game method uh, if you remember here it just sets the game over to false which tells it uh, the, to start the game again and uh, I'll just show you the difference right let's just let the roaches get out of control because that's always easier than actually getting rid of them you've been overrun by roaches now if I hit reset and I start the game again you'll see the roaches will start running around and reproducing as they do and that's it and this is now this is a simple and easy way uh, to end uh, a game um, either if you won or if you lost and the fantastic thing about it is if I were to go in here and uh, create a new world uh, new uh, uh, call it tile 2 maybe have a different tile um, a different background right uh, like this right and uh, if I do this um, this can also tell game over that the game is over or not and it game over does not care what world you're in it's going to work exactly the same 
and and that's the uh, wonderful thing about uh, using this static class and you can use it for lots of other things anything that you want to be uh, anything that you want to be true of the whole game itself, not uh, just a particular world, you can put in a static class like this. And uh, come back to Mr. Stewart's lesson soon, and we'll have another lesson. Not going to work.